Hello everyone and welcome to another incredible game from round 5 of this year's FIDE World Cup. After eliminating Hikaru Nakamura, Pregnananda now faces the very strong Hungarian Grandmaster uh, Ferenc Berkes, who also defeated many strong players to reach this point. He defeated, uh, uh, he, he played one more game, uh, one more match um, uh, than uh, Pregnananda as uh, Pregnananda was seeded directly into round 2. Uh, Berkes uh, was not in the top 50 so he had to play an extra round. He defeated Daria Porini, he defeated Boris Gelfand, he defeated Nikita Vitugov and the Rus Ponomario. Now he has to beat Pragnananda and uh, he's uh, 38 years old at the moment. 21 years ago at the age of 17 he became a world champion under 18 years old. So here Prague is facing a former world champion. Uh, let's check it out. This is the second game of their match. First game ended in a draw. Can he, can he hold Prague uh, uh, with the black pieces? Uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, Prague opens with pawn to e4 and we have pawn to e6. Uh, Ferenc opts for the French defense with d4, d5 and Prague goes for pawn to e5. The advanced variation of the French with pawn to c5 uh, striking against white's strong center and c3. We have knight to c3, knight to f6 and now queen to b6 putting more pressure on the d4 pawn and of course hindering the development of the dark square bishop. So here we have pawn to a3 preparing pawn to b4 and now bishop to d7. The, uh, main move here is just uh, pawn to c4. This is the uh, the most played, and uh, you know you actively fight against white playing pawn to b4. But here, Ferenc prepared a less played line, bishop to d7, and Prague says, "All right, you didn't stop before, so I I am going to play it pawn to b4." Uh, a sign of a great player does not hesitate to play b4 as soon as possible. C captures on d4, c captures and rook to c8, putting the rook on the only open file on the board. Bishop to b2, and now knight g to e7. We have knight to c3, and now notice that the bishop on b2 is undefended, so uh, Ferenc uses this to pretty much solve all of his developing issues, and that is uh, by playing knight to a5. Now, of course, you cannot capture because queen captures on b2, and Prague has to decide what to play here. Uh, this is still known territory, and one move that has been played here is knight to a4, with the idea of shifting the knight to c5. So, uh, while it can be played, let, let me just show you what happens. For example, queen c6, you will attack the knight here and uh, once the knight comes to c5 you will put your own knight to c4 so both knights nicely placed here you will of course save the bishop with bishop back to c1 chase away the knight knight will trade for bishop um, but okay the light square bishop isn't that impressive all of the pawns are on light squares it's the dark square bishop you are interested in queen captures and now you can play bishop to d3 and okay the game continues so this is something uh, an idea that has been used before but Prague says I don't like this he just goes for bishop to d3 and it is now as of move 11 that we have a completely new game so okay Ferenc uh, gets his knight to c4 as intended and Prague has to waste a move with bishop to c1 of course you are not giving up your your bishop for knight here uh, and pawn to a5 very nicely done we have castles and now a captures on b4 now before recapturing as you don't want to uh, uh, blunder a pawn uh, rook to b1 nicely aligning the uh, uh, rook with the black queen queen back to a7 and only now a captures on b4 we have pawn to b5 cementing the knight on c4 and Prague goes pawn to h4 the black king is still in the center of the board so you might do some knight to g5 queen h5 action the bishop is nicely placed on d3 maybe some future sacrifices with knight captures on d5 uh, you never know so here we have queen back to b6 uh, adding a defender to the, to the b5 pawn because as long as the knight and bishop are attacking the b5 pawn you can't really move the c4 knight anywhere so for the moment let the queen defend the pawn rook to e1 and this is a, a beautiful move by Prague he says how do you how does white improve his position here after queen to b6 uh, you know the bishop is very nice the knight is very nice okay this knight is very nice you could play something like bishop to d2 okay the bishop obviously can be improved from the c1 square but Prague goes for the very active rook d1 idea the plan being rook e2 rook a2 and of course uh well rook somewhere along the a file you, you'll see where uh, pawn to h6 and now rook e2 we have bishop to c6 uh, and okay square for the bishop but uh, for the moment the bishop is uh, more more of a pawn there you still have to figure out how to make use of the light square bishop we have rook to a2 and now bishop to b7 and here Prague goes for a very very interesting rook to a5 idea saying that this is a a, a great square for my rook I can even double up on the a file and if you want to capture well then this would happen if knight captures on a5 b uh, pawn captures on a5 queen captures then comes knight captures on b5 with the threat of knight to d6 check so you're gonna play knight to c6 in order 
uh, for the bishop to guard the d6 square, but after knight to d6 check, bishop captures and pawn captures. Uh, this is a monster pawn. You still have the bishop pair. You're going to defend it easily with bishop to f4. You can shift the bishop over to uh, to this diagonal, and this will be very, very hard for black to play. So this is Prague's idea behind this very early uh, exchange sacrifice. So Ferenc decides, nope, not touching that. He just goes bishop to c6, adds another defender uh, to the b5 pawn, and now queen to e2. We have pawn to g6 and rook b to a1. Nicely doubling up on the a file. And now knight to f5. This is a great square for the for the black knight. Uh, rook to a6, now attacking the queen and queen to d8. And here Prague just plays pawn to g4 and invites Ferenc to, uh, to, to capture the uh, pawn on h4 as the knight and queen are both attacking it and believe it or not here you have to you have to say nope not touching that pawn i have to go back with knight to e7 and slow play this with something like knight e7 bishop to d7 and try to basically you're waiting for white to to, to find a, a game plan here but here knight captures on h4 was played and this uh, gives uh prague a completely winning position it's not that easy to see why unless you see it then it's very easy so feel free to pause the video and win the game for prague uh, while i give you a couple of seconds so uh for those of you who were able to do it congratulations on spotting this uh very tough tactic and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show it is night captures on h4 that's the way to do it uh, queen captures on h4 and now the idea you had to see in order to play knight captures on h4 bishop captures on c4 but now what does this do you might think well uh, let's see after b captures now comes rook captures on c6 so those are the three captures you had to see knight captures on h4 bishop captures on c4 and rook captures on c6 which creates the unstoppable past b pawn which of course would not be possible if the pawn was not already on b4 so rook captures on c6 and now rook to a8 with check and now the problem is there's no good square for the king let me just show you what happens if king to e7 it's it's basically checkmate uh, queen to f3 threatening queen to f6 check so you're going to block that with bishop to g7 or for a rook trade but now knight captures on d5 with check e captures and rook a7 check nicely connecting with the f7 pawn so king to d8 but now you don't even touch the, the f7 when you play queen captures on d5 with check king to e8 and now queen to d7 with check you don't need to take the rook king f8 and queen captures on f7 will be checkmate so bishop to, uh king to e7 loses uh very very quickly so king to d7 was played and now prox still needs to work for his meal but queen to f3 the f7 pawn is undefended and pawn to f5 this is how Ferenc uh, um, uh, tries to defend his position and now well you could go for something e captures on f6 alpha saw you could play g captures on f5 uh pragos for the very nice pawn to b5 and uh, while this is incredibly strong it allows black to trade off queens uh, however Prague says no this is completely winning for me there is no problem here rook to c8 was played and now knight captures on d5 and here uh, of course uh, Ferenc needs to trade queens if he accepts the knight then it's just a beautiful checkmate queen captures on d5 king to c7 rook a7 check and it doesn't matter where you go it's going to be checkmate so instead after knight captures on d5 queen captures on g4 was played this comes with check and now queen captures f captures and knight to b6 nicely connecting with the rook here king King to c7 knight captures and now king to b7 you have to chase away the rook from the defense of the knight rook to a6 and now king captures on c8 uh, Prague captures on e6 king to b7 and now rook captures on g6 Prague just continues um uh, to uh, happily connect uh, collect pawns uh, even though bishop to e3 is also very strong you just uh, will take away the b6 square from the black king advance the pawn so you, you don't have to worry about king to b6 and this will be very much uh, winning for white but the uh, rook captures on g6 is also fine uh, pawn to c3 and now rook to c6 going after the passed pawn bishop to b4 defending the passed pawn and now bishop captures on h6 Prague collects yet another pawn rook to d8 going after the d4 pawn and now okay you could just go back with bishop to e3 proc uh, just goes back with rook to c4 bishop to a5 and now pawn to e6 advancing the past pawn 
king to b6 and now pawn to e7. We have rook to e8 and now comes bishop to g5. You have to defend the pawn, otherwise you cannot win this game. Uh, king captures on b5 and now rook to c5 with check. King to b6 and rook to d5. So now you don't have to worry about king going up the board as the bishop is hanging. So bishop back to b4 and now rook to d8. Now uh, Ferenc has to give up uh, the, uh, the exchange and Prague will have to beat uh, uh, his bishop with a rook. So rook captures on e7, bishop captures, bishop captures, and now of course rook to c8 going after the passed pawn. On to g3, there's really not much more you can try here. If, if you play bishop to b4, okay, you're defending the pawn, uh, but it's not really... I mean, it, 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 the pawn will never move. The, the king can never cross the uh, the C file. The the past uh, D pawn will just march forward. You will bring your king into the game, and that's it. The, this pawn is not really an issue. So here, one last trick was attempted by Ferenc. He played pawn to G3. It doesn't work unless Prague really, really messes up. But okay, I mean, you're still going to try it before resigning. Uh, the idea, of course, is that um, uh, if uh, you... Uh, well, uh, w what if you play f captures on g3, then bishop to f6, and then rook captures uh, on c3, uh, then bishop captures on d4 will just uh, pick up the rook, and of course uh, this will allow him to draw the game. But after bishop to f6, simply d5 was played, uh, and it was in this position on move 50 that Ferenc Berges resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. The pawn will be promoted to a queen. There are no more tricks, you don't have to worry, a c2 will be met by rook captures if the king attacks the rook you don't really care just rook to c4 then the king goes after the rook but you again again uh, a square so there's there's really nothing you you can try here even if there was no g pawn it'd still be winning but with the g pawn i mean you can just play literally anything so uh yeah after after this uh, d5 move uh here ferenc resigned or or maybe he didn't let me just check one more time i just want to really quickly check if this was where he resigned uh Ah, uh, no, sorry. Uh, it was after rook captures on c3, really, that... Uh, what? Sorry about this. No, this can't be... Uh, the, the PGN on, on the website is still wrong. No, no, no. Th this never happened after d5. Uh, here, uh, Ferenc resigned. Yeah, as there really is nothing more to be done here. Uh, I'm just going to really quickly check this, as it's... Uh, you know, sometimes it happens that uh, the PGNs get broken online. Uh, so... Let me just quickly check a, a valid resource, uh, like uh, like leeches or something. Uh, let me check this. All right, there we go. Ah, sorry. Seems that after g3, yeah, of course, f captures was not played. Rook captures and c3 was played in this position. Yeah, and it was on move 49 uh, that uh, Ferenc Berkes resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. See, I almost uh, uh, tricked you guys into believing that was the, the, the ending position where in fact it was this. So, you know, don't trust all the PGNs you, you see online. Some of them are just, uh, you know, some of them are just faulty, obviously. So, yeah, uh, big congratulations to Pragnananda on eliminating Ferenc Berkes uh, from the FIDE World Cup. He continues uh, his uh, uh, onslaught to, to win the World Cup into the quarterfinals. And these are some of the pairs that we have from the quarterfinals. As you can see, Gukesh will face Magnus Carlsen. Uh, Nijat Abasov is waiting uh, for uh, his opponent. It will be, uh, well, it will be either uh, Yanni Pomnashi or Vidit, depending on who wins uh, th their match tomorrow in the tiebreaks. Then we have Caruana versus Dominguez. And uh, we have an Indian matchup. Uh, Pragnananda will face Arjun Erigaisi. So those are the, the pairs of the quarterfinals. Uh, it's going to be going to be absolutely incredible. So I hope you hope you stay tuned. I, I most certainly will. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. Nicely done by uh, both of them. Uh, they, they reached all the way, but only one, uh, you know, as Highlander would say, there can be only one. So what are you going to do? Uh, I would like to thank uh, Emil Lamets, uh, Nagarjuna Ponugotti, Philip Haxtenberg, uh, Srinivas Kashap, and E1 Check for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I, I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup uh, until it finishes. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.